Shamai Palp, howdy everyone, and today I'm checking out a new lens from Venus Optics, the Lauer 85mm f5.6 macro 2 to 1. It's a manual focus macro lens designed for mirrorless cameras, full frame or APS C. It will come in Canon RF, Sony E, Nikon Z, and Leica M mounts. Lauer really enjoy putting out these 2 times magnification macro lenses, and as you can see, they can get you spectacular results, really, really close to even the smallest of subjects. The design priority for this one couldn't be more obvious. Darken the maximum aperture and make it as small as possible, and this model is indeed impressively tiny for a full frame lens with such magnification ability. The downside, obviously, is that the maximum aperture of any f5.6 restricts its use for normal photography, although the lens can focus all the way to infinity too, it just won't get you very out of focus backgrounds. Still, if small size and, presumably, a low price are your own priorities for a macro lens, then this could be the option for you. I'd like to thank Venus Optics for letting me borrow a sample copy of this lens for a couple of weeks for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. Pricing information for the lens will be in the description below, and I will pin it to the top of the comment section too. The lens itself is, as you can see, dead simple. Small, tough and metallic, it's a totally manual optic, manual aperture, manual focus. The rear mount is made of metal and does not feature weather sealing. The manual focus ring is broad, metallic and turns extremely smoothly, although it would be nice if it had just a little more precision for shooting at normal distances I think. As you can see here, the lens displays a lot of focus breathing, zooming in and out as you change focus, but that's simply par for the course on a macro lens, to be honest. At the front of the lens lies the aperture ring, which enables you to stop down to f22. It has gentle clicks on it, which is always helpful, but the aperture stops are not spaced out evenly. The front filter size is a tiny 46mm wide, and the lens comes with a small metallic hood. Overall, it's typical build quality here for a Chinese manual focus lens. Its fit and finish are perfectly nice, and it functions well if you're happy to work with a manual focus instrument, of course. Anyway, let's take a look at image quality. We'll start by testing it on a full frame camera, my Sony a7R 3 with its 42 megapixel sensor. There are no in-camera corrections. Straight from f5.6, image quality in the middle of the picture is excellent, great sharpness, punchy contrast. The corner image quality is a little softer, but still nice and sharp, with good contrast. At f8, we see a mild improvement in sharpness, and the corners stay this sharp down to f11, although stop down as far as f16 and a little softness becomes visible due to diffraction. All in all though, an excellent performance really, you can get macro lenses with slightly sharper corners than this, although you'd certainly have to pay a lot more money for them. Alright, let's see how it works on an APS-C camera now, my little Sony A5100 with its smaller and more densely packed 24 megapixel sensor. At f5.6, sharpness and contrast in the middle of your images is just good now, the corner image quality is noticeably soft. Stop down to f8, and the corners are better, and the middle of the image looks fantastic. f11 looks just as good in the middle, and just as good in the corners too. As you might expect, f16 and f22 get a lot softer, due to diffraction. Overall, the lens performs ok on a smaller APS-C sensor, the middle of your image is sharp enough if that's where your subject is framed, but there are sharper APS-C options out there, including Lauer's own 65mm f2.8 macro lens. As this is a macro lens now, let's go straight to the close-up image quality results. It's time to break out my favourite coin for this, commemorating the liberation of the Falkland Islands in 1982. Straight from f5.6, we see excellent image sharpness close up with very good contrast, f8 looks about the same, but unsurprisingly, f11 is starting to get noticeably softer from the effects of diffraction, which kick in much sooner when you're shooting so close up. Here's f16 and f22, both of which are very soft. So ideally, do your macro photography at f8 or brighter here. Now, let's take a look at distortion and vignetting. Well, there isn't any really. 
Okay, maybe some very slightly darker corners at f5.6, stop down to f11, and any kind of darkness there is gone. Okay, so far so good, let's see how the lens works against bright light. At f5.6, it's a really poor show, flaring, glaring, you name it. Stop down a bit to f8, and you can cut the glaring in half, but still, hardly a good performance there. Okay, let's take a look at the quality of this lens's bokeh. It's not terribly easy to get out of focus backgrounds with an f5.6 lens, even on a full frame camera. When you do get them, they look absolutely fine, no problems here, a clean bill of health. And related to bokeh comes longitudinal chromatic aberration. It's not normally an issue on lenses with dark apertures, and as you can see here, well, it's not a problem. Okay then, well, by now, you'll have got a handle on this lens, its optics are great, nice and sharp, especially on a full frame camera, well, unless you're shooting close to bright light. It gets you down to two times magnification, awesome, and it's relatively tiny. The obvious limitation is that dark maximum aperture of only f5.6, which will limit your portrait photography, and means that you're more likely to need to use a tripod for your macro shots. Well, honestly, for really good macro photography, you'll need your tripod anyway. So I wouldn't say that this is a lens with broad appeal, but for those who do want a macro optic that gets you extremely close to your subject without taking up much space in your lens bag, then this could be the one for you. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I love putting together these lens reviews, they are a bit costly and time consuming though. If you'd like to support the channel and keep things trucking on here, then check out the link to my Patreon in the description below. There's all kinds of interesting content there for regular supporters, including monthly exclusive videos, so do go over and check it out and ciao for now.